Hi, my name is Michelle and I am creating this video today to spread awareness about circumcision and my own experiences with it. Um, I am the daughter of a doctor who circumcises infants. She's an OBGYN and um, I've been wanting to make this video for a while and thinking about what I'm going to say. Um, I'm just going to dive in with my story. So I first learned about circumcision when I was about 11. My father got me a book um, for my mother to read to me about normal adolescent development and um, puberty. Um, and it had um, a chapter in it about girl development and a chapter in it about boy development. and one of the pages talked about circumcision and it had an illustration of it a very simple drawing of a circumcised penis versus an uncircumcised penis as it called it and i remember being really blown away by that concept because up until then i had only seen my cousins um, from diaper changes and um, potty training, I had seen some penises, and I had assumed that they had all been born that way, and I w was just blown away by the concept that um, there's basically two types of men, according to this book, circumcised and uncircumcised, and the book presented both ways as completely valid, so I was just amazed at the concept that one one group that they're only that way not because they were born that way but because they actually had part of their body cut off when they were born and i really wanted to ask my mom more about it she read me the book we read it together and um it, it was so weird to me and she she's obviously pro circumcision as you'll see in this video but um she kind of just dismissed my questions and wanted to move on, turn the page. So um, I didn't, I dropped the subject and didn't think anything of it for a year. And then um, my mom took me to, to, took me with her one day to watch a circumcision. She did that because she really wanted me to be a doctor and um, she thought it would be fun to take me with her to work one day to see what she does. Um, I know, I guess in her mind, she couldn't take me to see anything else. She couldn't take me to a birth because that could make the patient uncomfortable. Um, but this to her is a very minor, quick procedure, which it is quick, but um, she just thought it would be fun for me to come along. And I will say, um, before I talk about the circumcision, that I have never been a very squeamish person. I've always, um, even as a kid, I, I would watch when I got a shot, and um, I watched brain surgery on TV, which I thought was really interesting. And there was one year between when my mom went to medical school and residency, she took a year off. That was when I was in first grade, and she took me with her to work one day. She was working in a laboratory with mice, and she actually was doing surgery on the mice, which she did with full anesthesia, and I would watch, and um, I found it very interesting. I was not the type of child who would get in the way or interfere. I was very well behaved. So she decided she would take me with her this day. And I remember knowing kind of what it was and definitely feeling uncomfortable about it um, because just the mere concept would make anyone cringe. So I had high hopes for this procedure um, because I didn't want to think poorly of my mom. And I had hoped that it would be like 
the removal of a wart, watching the doctor remove that, or like watching a dentist maybe fill a cavity. I thought that it would involve um, the baby might cry a little bit if it got um, a shot or two, and then it would go completely numb and my mom would carry out the procedure and the baby would not react in any noticeable way because the baby wouldn't feel any of it. That's what I thought it would be like. And I also hoped that the intact penis would look really bad. I wanted it to look um, like it had extra skin, as my mother called it. I wanted it to look just unsightly. Um, since I have four babies, I, I know what the umbilical cord looks like when it dies and eventually falls off. And um, I hoped it would be something like that. Just clearly an unnecessary extra part that needed to be removed or needed to fall off or something. Um, and that's not what it was like at all. So the baby came in and the nurse brought the baby in and he was sound asleep. Um, he, he was so sleepy, so asleep that when they unbundled him and took off his diaper, took off everything and laid him down on the table, which I learned later is called the circumstraint, he slept through the whole thing. And my mom tied his arms and legs down and he slept through all of that. And I remember, um, even though he was asleep and he wasn't in any sort of distress from it, um, I remember thinking how horrible that looked to see a baby boy tied down like that it just looked terrible. And, um, the, my mom covered him with some paper sheets and um, she covered every part of him except his face and his little penis and um, I remember being pretty amazed at how it didn't look bad at all it looked totally normal um, it didn't look like what I had known to be normal but it looked totally healthy it didn't look like anything was extra that needed to be removed. It didn't look like it needed to be altered in any way. So my mom the whole time was very cheerful and talking to me the way a teacher would talk to a student. She was saying, oh, now we're going to do this, and now I'm going to do this. And I was just watching, and then... Um, this is, this is going to get harder and harder for me to explain. And if I'm smiling, it's not because I'm happy. It's because I'm trying to keep it together. Um, she, she used some instrument. Um, and she was talking to me and telling me she's just going to insert this underneath the foreskin to protect the penis so that she doesn't accidentally injure the penis. And when she inserted that under the foreskin, that's when the baby screamed, like screamed, like it, what, what's so weird is I've actually blocked out in my memory, the sounds of his screams. Um, I can't remember the pitch or or what it sounded like. All, all I remember is how incredibly horrified I was, how I felt, and um, how he looked, and how he he uh, he was screaming like. He couldn't have possibly screamed any worse. I mean, she could have been murdering him. She could have been cutting off his arms and legs and killing him and doing anything to him. And he couldn't have possibly screamed worse than that. So he, um, 
I, I was watching him screaming and watching how terrible it looked that he was literally tied down and um, his penis was sticking straight up and my mom was hunched over him doing what she was doing while he was just screaming in agony and I felt just so many feelings at once um I felt like just how awful it looked that he couldn't defend himself that he couldn't push her away he couldn't even writhe he couldn't even like move around in pain he was just strapped down all he could do was scream and I remember being so shocked because I, as I said before, I thought the first cry would be of him getting a shot. And so I was just appalled that, um, as far as I could tell, he was feeling every bit of this. And um, his little penis was just completely exposed and sticking out for her to do what she was doing. And um, that there was nothing he could do. And um, as, a, as a mother and just as a human being, you can tell when a baby is in pain. You can tell that the cry is different. Um, my babies have, they've gotten shots, they've gotten bumped, they've, got, they've fallen, they've skinned their knees when they were toddlers. And you know what it sounds like, you know... Um, that it hurts, but then they settle down and they're okay. Um, this was a sound, this was a reaction I had never seen before. And it was very alarming to me. And I also didn't know at the time that the foreskin is fused to the head of the penis. So the whole thing really surprised me that he was in that kind of agony um, before she even started cutting. So then, um, you know, my mom seemed completely unfazed by this at all. And um, then the baby just stopped. He just completely, instantly stopped screaming. Um, his eyes were already shut, but his, his mouth was wide open, and his face was all red, and he instantly stopped crying and just kind of closed his mouth more and didn't make a sound. Um, and I had never seen anyone in pain like this before, any human or any animal. Um, and I found it as horrified as, as I was, I found it interesting to say the least this kind of reaction to pain that I didn't know humans had um, I knew it was some sort of shock um, but I had I didn't I hadn't been taught anything about that and um, then my mom just continued as she as she was and she said he's see he's just sleeping <laughs> and I was like oh my god I I know he's not sleeping because he was sleeping before she started. He was woken up out of his sleep to those screams, and now he it was like he could have been dead. I mean, I knew he wasn't dead, but um, he was just completely non-responsive. And so then she used the knife and cut around the um, device and cut the foreskin off, and he wasn't even moving. And I remember wondering if he could feel any of that at that point because it was like he wasn't even there and then um when when she finished his penis looked like any other circumcised penis that i had seen and um it it was done successfully um there wasn't any extra bleeding or any problems as far as I could tell beyond what had been done to him. But um, obviously you can tell I was very disturbed by this. 
so the nurse was the one who um who bundled him up again put his diaper on him and she seemed very upset she seemed like she couldn't stand what she had just watched and uh, i remember so well how she held him close to her and was shaking him and she was going she was saying these words poor little man poor little man over and over again and um I was looking at her and looking at my mom. I, I don't think I really looked at my mom much. I was very bothered by what I had just seen, but I was thinking back and forth, the nurse, my mom, the nurse, my mom, because the nurse's reaction seemed like what you would expect it to be. And my mom was just happy and cheerful and like, oh, what do you want to maybe we should go to the store or, you know, we're just going to head on out. And like, it was no big deal at all. And, um, I didn't want to think badly of my mom because she was my mom. Um, and so I thought in my head, well, is the nurse being overly dramatic here? Um, but clearly she wasn't. Um, even now, my stance on it now, I don't think nurses should be doing this. I think if they know it's wrong, they need to take a stand and they need to say, I'm not going to participate. But um, to me, I remember being kind of just bombarded with this thought, something is wrong with my mom. Something's terribly wrong with my mom. Um she doesn't know right from wrong. She doesn't know what other people's feelings are. She's, she's supposed to be helping people. She's a doctor and look what she just did. Um, I have described this incident to several people and I say, this was torture. I watched her torture a baby and, um, I was so disturbed. I didn't say a word. I didn't say a word at all for years. I'm, I mean, literally, like until now, over 20 years, I didn't say a word to her about it because I was so bothered by it. And um, I remember when the nurse was holding that baby and trying to soothe him and he was just out. He was not even there. And I remember feeling so sorry for him and also his parents because they wouldn't know. He went in to the room asleep and he came out looking asleep, but he was very damaged by this, I knew. And so when I got in the car afterwards, I remember looking out the window at the trees going by and not being able to handle what I had seen. So I just decided not to think about it at all. And I really managed to do that. I'm kind of amazed at my own psychology that I was capable of that kind of blocking out of a painful experience. But um, I didn't think about it at all. And I was so good at not thinking about it that when my mom got pregnant that following year, she gave birth to my brother when I was 13. And it didn't even occur to me the whole pregnancy that this might happen to him after he was born. So um, when he was born, I learned that he had been circumcised after the fact and I remembered being really struck by how cold my stepfather was when he told me about it. He was the one who told me about it. It was, I think it was before we left the hospital, he had been circumcised maybe that morning and uh, my stepfather told me he was laughing and he told me that my mom's doctor, her OBGYN, refused to circumcise my brother. 
and he said, my stepfather said, do you want to know why? I'm laughing, like, th this guy's so weird. So I was like, yeah, why didn't he do it? And um, so my stepfather was saying that this doctor refuses to circumcise baby boys because he thinks it's unethical because um, he, he thinks it's unethical to do surgery on a human being without general anesthesia. And you can't do general anesthesia on a newborn, so he just isn't doing them at all. And he was smiling and acting like this guy is really weird. And um, so he said they just found someone else to do it, and he had it done. And uh, I remember saying nothing because... Um, in my mind, that doctor had a perfectly valid point, and um, I was shocked at how determined they were to get him circumcised in spite of that, and also um, surprised at how cold my stepfather was to not even um, pause by what this guy had said, this doctor and um and to just judge him and also the fact that the procedure was done already it wasn't like i could um make a difference at that point and i also knew that my viewpoint um wouldn't have been considered as valid anyway even if i did give some sound arguments as to maybe why this isn't the best idea but um I remember when my brother came home, he was a preemie, he was four weeks early, and he was tiny and very skinny, and um, the doctor said that he had to nurse very frequently to make sure he could gain weight, and that first day, he just kept drifting off. He couldn't stay latched on long enough to nurse he just would fall asleep and so we were told to pinch his foot and his earlobe to get him to stay awake long enough to nurse and he just kept drifting off i mean he really behaved similarly to that baby boy that i had witnessed get circumcised so my mom was really upset um she never said anything like, oh, it's because of his circumcision. Um, she just thought he was too premature to be home. She thought he needed to be at the hospital longer. And they ended up taking him back to the hospital an extra night because of him not nursing. And um, then when he came back home again, I remember helping with his diaper changes, and um, I knew he was circumcised, and I really hoped that, again, I, I was very hopeful <laughs> that um, it wouldn't take long for him to heal. I thought it might be just a few days, and I was really surprised that it was much longer than that. Um, he would cry. I mean, he he was in very obvious pain if we even just so gently, just barely even touched the tip of his penis, he would cry and scream and whimper. And, um, and I remember my mom, I remember her reaction one time where she was like, I know it hurts. And um I I felt so bad for him. And then um I just didn't think about it anymore. I didn't want to think about it. And the subject came up every so often though. I mean, I remembered um being with a group of teenagers and one of them talking about how he remembered his circumcision because he was a little older when he had it done, like four or something. 
and um, he was seeing how it really hurt, and a whole group of kids was laughing at him, and and I just listened to that whole exchange and didn't say anything because I was a very shy girl and I really didn't have much confidence, but I I felt very sorry for him and how no one seemed to care. They just thought the whole thing was funny. Um, but I was then reminded again of circumcision when my, my father got remarried um, to my stepmother, and they had three children when I was in high school. They had two daughters, and then when I was a senior in high school, they had a son, and they decided not to get him circumcised. And um, to me, it was very, very obvious how different their babies behaved versus my brother on my mom's side. Um, I kind of thought or maybe just hoped that it was the difference between a boy versus a girl because their daughters, their baby girls, were just calm and happy. And then um, they had a son, and he was also calm and happy, quietly alert. Um, and it was very different from the way my brother acted on the other side. Um, and of course, when my brother was acting like that, no one said anything. Like when my mom was having trouble nursing him the first night, or even other than that one time that she acknowledged his pain during a diaper change, they never said anything like, oh, he's not acting right because of his circumcision. Um, it was just kind of assumed like that's normal, but it wasn't normal. He was very clearly in agony um, for a long time. And um, the fact that my other brother didn't get circumcised, to me it was almost like a smack in the face. Um, I'm so glad he wasn't, but it was just such a reminder that my mom did this, was doing this to babies, and there was no reason for it. Um, so I, I went on to really not think about it, um, because it was just so painful for me to face. I didn't research it. I didn't look into it until I was in my twenties. And during that time, my mom and I actually became estranged for six years. So, um, we weren't talking at all she got really mad at me over an issue that was totally unrelated. Um, if you can tell she's the type you really can't, I, I never felt comfortable really being honest with her. She was very controlling. Um, and so when I finally learned about it in my twenties, I was, so diswrought. I was just like, I cannot believe this is happening. Um, I learned about the functions of the foreskin. And I remember the very first article I read talked about how all male mammals have a foreskin and how um, I, I was just sold from that first article. I mean, obviously I had the whole experience of witnessing it, so I should have been pretty convinced, easy to convince, but um, I had also years of blocking the whole experience out and trying to pretend it wasn't as bad as it was, or at least just trying not to think about it. Um, and then once I started researching it, I just couldn't get enough of it. I just read and read as much as I could and didn't know what to do because my mom and I weren't speaking and I wasn't on Facebook yet or anything. So I, I just told a couple people and sent out some emails to some people I knew saying, this is, this is a really horrible thing that's happening and it needs to stop. And um, then my, my sister-in-law, my husband's brother and his wife, they got pregnant um, before I started having kids and they had a boy and I tried really hard to 
convinced her not to get him circumcised. I talked to her. My husband spoke to her husband, his brother, and I sent her emails. And then I sent her um, an email with some videos. And I said, you have to watch this. If you're going to make your son feel this, you have to be willing to watch it. And um, I've never watched a video because I can't, I can't force myself. I can't put myself through that again by watching one. Um, I've watched videos of people talking about circumcision and every once in a while it might show um, footage of one being done or some audio clips of the baby screaming and I very quickly have to delete it or fast forward or something because I can't do that to myself. I find it so disturbing. Um, I already saw it and I think seeing it in person is probably worse than seeing it in a video because I was right there. I mean, I was within an arm's length away of him and so um, I sent all this to um, this family. I mean, this is, this was my first nephew and they went ahead and had him circumcised and I was so devastated. I, I was so very upset by the fact that they did this in spite of my efforts to inform them. And, um, I never was really able to talk to the mom about it. I actually did a little bit very recently. He's eight years old now. Right afterwards, I couldn't. I was just so upset. I was like, I didn't want to talk about it. I didn't feel like there was anything to be said. And um, I remember how they, the mother and father, acted so surprised at how hard parenting is because they were so unlucky to have an extremely fussy baby. Um, he apparently slept almost nonstop when they were in the hospital. So my guess is he was in shock like, like so many baby boys are when they are first circumcised. Um, and that shock is because they truly cannot handle the pain. It is so intolerable that it's not even their way of coping with their pain. It's more their way of surviving and staying alive in spite of such a severe pain. And I think any human being knows that. I think some people dismiss women when they talk about circumcision pain because they're like, well, you don't have a penis, so you don't know. But we have genitals. We all know how sensitive they are. And the mere thought of sharp instruments cutting us down there is just appalling to anyone. Um, but anyway, he was asleep, uh, like nonstop when they were in the hospital. And then when he came home, he screamed so much. His mother told me that he screamed for 20 hours a day and he slept for four hours a day. And that's all he did. He slept a little bit, much less than a baby should be sleeping at that age, and spent the rest of the time screaming. And they tried holding him and rocking him and doing whatever they could to um, soothe him, and nothing worked. They ended up just kind of passing him back and forth, kind of like duty. Like, I'll take the screaming baby for a little while, give you a break, and now you take the screaming baby for a little while, give me a break. and. They never once said, I think it might be because he was in pain. They just thought, oh, wow, we sure got a difficult baby. I was so mad at them. I'm still mad at them. And when I mentioned it to my sister-in-law very recently, um, the reason I did was because I'm finally now speaking out about this. And I, I kind of wanted to tell her about what's going on with me and my mom. And um, it was very hard for me to talk about it because she said, well, I just left it up to him because he's a man, the father. And 
um, I really felt like a weight on me. Like all that effort I put into it meant nothing. And I just felt so sorry for their son because I think it really does influence their brain development. I think um, there's long-term consequences to this in addition to the resentment and anger that men feel that they were literally robbed of something that they were meant to have. So um, I felt very heavy. But anyway, my, my, um, I, I was so upset about that, that I stopped speaking out about circumcision for years. So I was so distraught by the fact that I knew what was happening. I knew how awful it was. I was trying to tell people, and at least in this case, they didn't listen to me. And I found it easier just to not think about it than to be so upset by this. So I kind of thought, well, I'll probably have kids of my own, and... I will make sure that if I have a son, I won't do this to him. And for me, that was enough for a little while. Um, I ended up having um, four kids. I have three daughters and one son. And my son is almost three years old. He'll be three this month. So um, I had him and... Uh, shortly after I started having kids, my mom and I started talking again, um, and I didn't tell her anything about this, um, but she would mention circumcision every once in a while for her job, and it just killed me. I mean, she would say, oh, um, you know, we can meet for lunch, but I have to do a circumcision in the morning before we get together, so it'll have to be, like, after one o'clock. Or I mean, she would just casually mention it, and it was, like, oh, it was so awful because I didn't feel comfortable telling her how I really felt. And um, I had my son, and we did not circumcise him. Um, and my husband, he, he was circumcised as a baby, but he's against it. He's always, as long as I've known him, he's been against it. And um, when we were in the hospital, um, my mom didn't give me a hard time about choosing not to have him circumcised. She was kind of like, well, you do what you want. He's your kid. That's fine. Um, but she did ask us if we were doing it or why we weren't doing it when we were in the hospital with him. And I was sitting on the hospital bed holding my baby and my husband was talking to her about it. And I was not participating in the conversation because I just couldn't, I kind of feel like someone that emotionally disconnected to do what she did can't be reasoned with logically and it would probably just upset me. So um, my mom asked him if we were going to do it and my husband was like, no. <laughs> and, and she was like, oh, okay. And um, then she said, well, you know, the men in our family have had a very, very um, rough time with their foreskins because She's Korean, and in Korea, they, they didn't do that to my grandfather or my uncle. And after they moved to America, they apparently needed to get circumcised, which I don't buy. I think um, American doctors try to find excuses to circumcise instead of actually treating whatever issues these men are having. Um, she said something like, they just had tight foreskins or phimosis or something. And phimosis is um, foreskin that is unable to be retracted after puberty. But my uncle got circumcised when he was still young. So I, I just, I don't really believe any of that. Um, I know they were circumcised after they moved here, though. So she was saying, well, they'll, they'll he might have issues, but fine, you take that risk. And then um, she said something like, 
his risk of spreading HPV um, or cervical cancer to his female partners is higher if he's not circumcised, but clearly you don't care about her, you only care about him. So um, and she said it in a way that was kind of like, she was implying that we were the ones who were uncaring by leaving him intact. And um, I didn't say anything. But then my husband said to her, does it hurt? And she said, nope, they don't feel any pain or they feel no pain because we numb them up first. And I, I, I kind of wonder what my face looked like when she said that, because I thought, you know, sitting on the bed, holding my baby and thinking, am I going to fall off this bed here? Because I was so blown away, just so shocked that she would say that, that they felt no pain. So I was pretty mad that my mom said that the babies feel no pain because they're numbed up first, because I know that must be what she's telling her patients. I'm sure her patients wonder if this is painful and she's reassuring them and saying they don't feel pain when clearly that's not what I saw at all. And I was just racking my brain for the past couple of years actually on what kind of numbing is she talking about? Because that was one of the things I found the most appalling was that she didn't numb him up first. So, um, and then my mom said afterwards how um, she has only had one patient in her entire career who has not wanted her to circumcise her son. Only one that she didn't circumcise. Um, which that really surprised me but I think it's because they trust her and think, well, if, if she's willing to do it, it must be a good thing. And so um, after some time went by, until recently, I just kind of snapped and was like, I can't pretend this is okay with me anymore. I can't just keep silent about this. Um, I ended up printing out some articles for her and um, asked my husband to talk to her because I just couldn't stomach it. Like, I, I couldn't have that conversation with her. And um, he ended up talking to her and telling her that I got this information for her. And long story short, she's she doesn't want to know. She doesn't want to hear what I have to say. And she actually um, said that I couldn't have gone with her. Like she said that whole thing couldn't have happened. Um, so she just denied the whole thing basically and said, I never saw it, which to me is crazy because <laughs> I did see it. I didn't make this up. And um, she said again that the babies are numbed up and um, any pain they do feel maybe I don't know if she's talking about during or after but any pain at all she said they just forget so she she doesn't think she's doing anything wrong and um I kind of decided before I presented that information to her through my husband that I would just pull away from her because I mean I have mixed feelings about it. I want a good relationship with her, but I also think um, if we as intactivists believe what we're saying, we have to show that we mean it. Like, we can't just act like this isn't a big deal. Um, and I think also, since she is such um, an opinionated person that I have not been able to feel comfortable talking to her, honestly. Um, just the fact that I'm making th these videos, it's like, I can't imagine her reaction. I think she probably would never want to speak to me again. I mean, she's already done stuff like that to me before. So here I am being very vocal against her. And um, 
So I think I'm kind of taking the first step by pulling away from her first. I don't want to speak out like this and then visit her and pretend everything's fine. And uh, I don't want to go against behind her back like that while pretending that I'm okay with this. So um, that's pretty much where I'm at now. So um, <sighs> I know that's a lot. I think that we need to be bold. I think a lot of people are they're like, well, I wouldn't do it to my son, but I don't want to cause a problem. And I think when I look when we look back at history and progress people have made and things we've done away with, like slavery and cruel and unusual punishments and all these things, people had to get a little angry and they had to say, this is wrong and I feel strongly enough about this that I'm not going to just look the other way. So I hope this word gets out. I I don't know what to do. I don't know what's going to happen with my mom, but I feel like as hard as it is on me to have this tough relationship with her, um, these things need to be said. Thank you.